Hey, everybody. Son's video goes down smooth every time. I'm glad we don't have to do another take of that. Hey, guys. How's it going? It took us 70, 70 cans of soda to start this. Yeah. It's tough. We had to pour them all out. They're prop sodas. <laughs> props. Okay, it's prop sodas. Wait, uh, wait a minute. That's something we should actually sell. Sons of Video Band prop sodas? Yeah, of course. Dude, That's we like should... you don't know Jack style. No, we should sell prop, the whole, like, like novelty line. Like, Sons of Video garlic gum. Sons of Video <laughs> whoopee cushions. Dude, we'd be like... Well, it would be in magic shops. Yeah, exactly. Totally, dude. Guys, welcome. I'm Tom C. That's Sons D-Marks. of Video elect- electrocuted controllers. Think about it. That's not a terrible idea. Be you like, know the, hey friend, you want to play some Madden ball? Ooh, zap. I mean, you, zap. You know, honestly, the novelty controller market's untapped. Yeah, it really is. It's totally untapped. I, I, okay, well, there is uh, controllers that are made out of soap. Yeah, but I feel like that's different. But no one wants to be cleaned as a joke. You want to get dirty. Yeah. Dirty as a joke. Dirty as a joke. Wait, it's early. I thought it was later than it is. Hey, yeah, guys. Did. Um, <laughs> early. 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 Guys, we're the sons of video. We play video games. We sure are. We occasionally Scary. do a podcast like this. Um, only when it's important, though. Every week. Something Every important single happens. week, something important something happens. Something important happens, and we bring the best of it to you. You know why we do that? Because we uh, like hearing ourselves talk. Because of the fat paycheck. Oh, yeah. As every week, we bring home $3 million we bring with home a negative. Dollar bills. <laughs> dollar bills. Dollar, dollar bills. But no, we do it for you. Because you guys pay our bills. But the thing is, guys, we don't get paid. We don't. But you know who does get paid for things? Professional reviewers. Yeah. Which people, we're not. People call them critics. They call them, uh, well, I heard them called critex. I've never heard that. Well, I only heard it once, and it was before I corrected somebody. I only heard it once, and it was, and it was when I said it right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, guys, I think that's I think that's the topic of today. It's well we'll be for a little bit until we, until guys. we change it into shark attacks. Yeah, well, yeah, shark attacks are very a real threat. Because here's the deal, guys. Tom and I we like the video, like we said. We, we like we playing love the, the video. games. We sit there with the joysticks and the D pads and the buttons. We hit all the buttons every single well, time. Well, uh, when appropriate. Yeah, when appropriate. We don't just hit any of them. <laughs> uh, we could. We could do that. Yeah, we could do that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's important for us to know which games are good and which games are not good. Yeah. But some people, they totally leave it up to just, like, internet journalist folks, and they're like, yo, duh, and they say... And magazines, don't forget about magazines. And magazines. They say, like, I'm reading an article right now, and I'm looking down at it, it says, like, yo, dog, this game's whack. <laughs> and I'm like... That, that was in Fresh Magazine. Fresh, <laughs> fresh Gamer. Right. <laughs> Fresh Gamer. Urban right, Gamer magazine. Monthly. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they write reviews. And can you just... I just feel like you can't trust reviewers, like, at all. Because my, my... Is it that you can't trust it or that you don't like that system? I just don't trust it. Because here's the deal, guys. I'm a bit of a conspiracy... conspiracy well, man. we both are. Bit of a conspiracy man. And I personally believe that if you're a paid critic, that you're getting bribed all the time. Totally. You, you are totally uh, biased consistently, because I remember reading, um, this was a while back, but um, on, Me- you know the site Metacritic? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Metacritic, they were doing ratings for uh, Fallout New Vegas, and Bethesda offered um, uh, Obsidian Studios a bonus if um, Fallout New Vegas reached a Metacritic score of at least 85. I think I remember that. And then... Well, New Vegas got a Metacritic score of 84, and pretty much everybody thought that Bethesda was just trying to pay off critics to keep the uh, reviews lower than an 85, so that they didn't have to pay uh, Obsidian their bonuses. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. But it's totally, if you can get away with paying some light, slightly less money, not have people, because nobody's going to bulk over a difference between an 84 and an 85. Yeah. So it's, I see what you're saying, because most people would probably round up on that. Yeah, it's still a reasonable thing, but you're spending less money to bribe off uh, reviewers and stuff, so that you don't have to pay more money to your developers and whatnot, then, you know, obviously an unscrupulous corporation like Bethesda is going to do that. Totally. I thought, I thought you were going to be more against the idea of numerical reviews. Well, I do hate those in general, and that's 
another reason why that because I, I also believe that it, it that any critic of anything is probably going to be paid off a lot yeah because the thing is there's something called integrity yeah. which they're supposed to have a lot of people don't have that a lot of people don't have that we can all blame the politicians for making money so hard to find well no and you're right that i also do i've never really... seen money before that's true you're right to say also that I really dislike a numeric system mm-hmm. because, um, first of all, it's such like it seems to be such a like a cop out because the Metacritic you're like gets an eighty four out of a hundred or gets a fifty five out of a hundred or sixty three right. out of a hundred and you're like, but, but, but based on what <coughs> like, when Sorry. people don't give no when people don't give reasonings for numbered reviews it's just totally lazy reviewing I feel. Uh, you see that a lot, and and it's just because it doesn't get the point across. There's never if there's no explanation why they feel about that game, then it makes the numerical system totally invalid. But if you have a full length article reviewing a game, then the aren't then numerics are totally unnecessary because you're still getting what the reviewer thought about the game through reading an article. But then you don't need to know what the numbers are because you still know what he thinks about it. So Yahtzee says this, yeah, he said it before. Which the reason he never d- did a uh, did numerical reviews was not only because he doesn't really do reviews at all, but because everyone else does that and he just doesn't understand that concept. Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. No, it's it's kind of an unreasonable thing. And everyone always like demands just a number so they can say, "Oh, I'm not going to buy it." When the experiences are all wildly different for everything. Yeah, and if people could give a Madden 13 a 10 out of 10 for being a, a perfect football game and then you wouldn't give a new vegas a 10 out of 10 or whatever yeah because because of some other thing but you're like but i I wouldn't like that as much and it doesn't make this there's less stuff there you know yeah it's it's just kind (coughs) of not my cup of tea um i'm not trying to pimp out a website dudes i'm not but we i i did a recently a video for my friend's website and they don't do reviews like that either which i thought was kind of refreshing because there's a lot a lot of websites that do numerical things, and because uh, you got you got all the classics. Well, what is, what do they do different, Tom? They just they just write an article about it. Oh, they just they don't do numbers, dude. You should plug the blog then, because that's what I do. We don't do any games. I did just did a big Metro twenty thirty three one. Guys, we're always plugging our blog. <laughs> dude, we want to do reviews too here at Sun's Video. We do. Yeah, but I just don't have time to do stuff. Basically, it's the only reason. Dude, we did a review of that uh, Vampire Bloodlust RPG game. Yeah, dude. Guys, if you ever want to see us review a game, just write us, dude. We'll, we'll, we'll dude it up, dude. Eventually. Are you drinking my soda? No. <laughs> Guys, um, I'm going to tell... Like, here's the deal. When I was a youngster, a young kid, and I subscribed to all those gaming magazines, like EGM, which I liked. Yeah. Nintendo Power, which I liked. Yep. Uh, yeah. Game... I didn't like Game Pro. There's yeah. some other one I liked. But anyway, when I started those, I used to really care about ratings because I could only buy one game a year. Yeah. And also because the internet didn't exist. But now that it does exist, the only, really, the only real way that I get out and I get a game is after seeing like enough hype or enough talk about it. Yeah, and the thing of it is, is like, I feel like people are always going <coughs> to gravitate to the games that they like in general. Because, like, obviously, if a new Fallout game came out tomorrow, I didn't care what the review said, we would buy it. Yeah, absolutely. That's all there is to it. Absolutely, and it's the same thing like you were saying with like Madden and stuff. If a Madden game got if a Madden game got like a two out of ten, people who like playing football and like Madden and all that stuff, they're still going to buy it. The reviews aren't going to stop them. Honestly, reviews are review words and reviews are kind of boned anyways because of the internet. Yeah, because there's so many people who will say uh, this game got a ten out of ten, but I don't like it, so they were paid off. Or they'll be like, this game got a, got a, a five out of ten, but I do like it. So those rev- those reviewers were were wrong or stupid. And another thing, and another thing is, is that we were talking about, as you just kind of touched on a little bit. I'm touching on everything. Touching touch upon it. Yeah. Is that back in the day when the internet wasn't really around, the only people who the only way to get out opinions to the to the mass public was through like a publication like an EGM or what or Game Informer. Yeah. But if but nowadays with your YouTubes and your blogs and stuff. Because that's how Yahtzee got a start. He did, like, two reviews on YouTube, and it made him incredibly popular. Yeah. And uh, it's just... That's because he mentioned balls or butts enough, I guess. I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> Says poop enough times nope, to get no, on the nope. internet. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. So, on. it's just... I mean, it's it's just a, one of the many, many, many ways that the internet is changing everything, period. Seriously. Because, like, it, it's... Because you're right, it's it's totally unnecessary to have almost paid reviewers anymore, because 
there's absolutely maybe this is the 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 bottom bottom level of my argument about why I don't really like critics and reviews and stuff. But there, that I feel like a lot of them just have they, they don't have any credibility that I should take more or less above anyone else who's ever played a video game ever. See, because if, if oh, I'm going to make up a name, Scott Williams. Skin Dim Dom. Scott, Scott Wilkins. Slutty Head reviewer Macondo. over at Video Game Players Monthly Quarterly Magazine. Yeah. Head, head, head reviewer guy. Ultimate reviews. If team. he was sitting here right now, special guest panel, Scott Wilkins, and he was like, Well, I really enjoyed Final Fantasy thirteen. I think it gets a 13 out of 10. First of all, I'd deck him right in the face. <laughs> Second of all, if he said that he really liked the game, and everyone else that I knew... Uh, didn't like Final Fantasy XIII, why would I trust Scott Wilkins' opinion at all? <clears throat> where, where does his credibility come from? <laughs> well, that's a lot of things, you know? Because the other... Th- the, here's here's something that... You, you, you've you always yelled at me for this, but it's, it's a thing about trust. And I spent a lot of time watching Yahtzee videos, so whenever he condemns a game, I'm like, that can't be that good. Whenever he says a game is good, I'm like, I should try it. Even though he's often wrong about these things. Yeah. Because he said Bioshock 2 was bad, which we know it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> uh, but he says it's like the worst game of the year, and that's just wrong. But the thing is, like, I, he's earned my trust not as a great gamer, but as a person who can... Per, as a person I like. Yeah, and, and like, you know, I'll, I'll, take his, I'll take him into consideration... But I but I have my own biases, and if he goes against those, I'm straight up just gonna not pay attention to what he says. Oh, yeah, but you're 100 percent right. But like, you, would you trust uh, Jim Fatality because he's a world famous gamer? Yeah, it's no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because I don't know anything about Jim. Whatever. Exactly, because they're just na- they're just names on a page. If you reviewed a game, you said I'm D Marks, and this game rocks my socks. I'd be like, well, all right, I'll play it. Yeah, absolutely, I'll play it. I know who you are. I know what you you know. It's because I, I I hope through our through our talks our podcasts maybe some of you guys who uh, weren't going to we play Metro twenty thirty three maybe the some of you guys who weren't going to play L A Noir maybe you at least thought about it after hearing your friends Tom and D tell you all about how great we thought they were or maybe you did check out that Bloodlust <coughs> Shadow Hunter game because it was a free download and I said why not try it yeah guys because that would I would appreciate that but that's because I what we try to do. Is we try to set ourselves, we try to give ourselves a level of credibility. We're always stating our credentials. We, yeah. we go in depth with topics constantly. We tell you why we think things, yeah, and why things would make us feel certain ways, and what makes things good and what makes things bad. We didn't go. We didn't. We go have. To, a, we have a whole uh, body of work that allows you to read and understand us. We didn't go to four years of college to study to learn women's studies. And that didn't pan out, so we became video game reporters. Actually, Maddox had a thing about this, where it was people who were talking about how he isn't funny at all, and they were like, if people were writing in, he's like, all right, well, you can just you can say that, and that's fine, but what what do you think is funny? And so he like read about this, he read he found this guy's email who tell, told him this thing. So he like looks up all the stuff he's ever done, yeah. And he like finds comments on forums and like videos that he thinks is funny, yeah. And he's like, well, that's what this guy thinks is funny. I'm not that, I guess. <laughs> and it's stuff like that all the time, you know. Yeah. Because it's 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 a, if you don't know someone's body of work, you can't trust their uh, reviews of something straight yeah. up. And like I said, if you guys are regular listeners, then you know where we're coming from. You know that when we talk about Fallout New Vegas, we're uh, pretty much going to be almost pandering to it. Yeah. We're we we'll like. Yeah, sure, it has tons of bugs, and some of the enemies are extremely difficult for no reason. But who cares? It's Fallout in Vegas. Dude, that's almost not fair about us, though. Because we, we had to be earned into the Fallout uh, herd anyway. We didn't just wake up one day and we're like, Fallout's great. We played the games and we got to a well, point yeah, of that's loving true. it. The games are clearly are more than, the, more than the bugs and everything. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I think when people, a lot of people think about the new Fallout games, they think about the bugs. So remember, guys... You may trust Jim Palushi. Jim Jarmusch. But he might be a child rapist. You know what? I'm not a child rapist. Yeah, he totally is not. Uh, never convicted. Never did it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can trust all my reviews. If I say Banjo-Kazooie number 16 sucks, you know what? You probably not trust that one because Banjo-Kazooie yeah, made two. They made three. They made three. Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, and then Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which no one liked. Uh, Suck it. 
Then they, they jumped make, to sixteen. I was say they still didn't make sixteen. I'm just saying, guys. You know, you know where we are. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's that's what one. you might want to say. I might sneeze in the near future. So cut me some slack. Is that maybe uh, these? It, it's never going to happen. But maybe like big gaming sites like an IGN or something. Maybe they convert to an all like like a gaming content website where they post like first the first on the scene game trailers. Stuff like that. Like with the game we're going to talk about later. I thought Game Informer already did stuff like that. We're saying IGN. Well, I thought they already did stuff like that. They do. Maybe they should just be just that. Oh. And give, like, uh, uh, an opinion on that. Well, yeah, especially because, like, a lot Cause, of... Because the reviews of, are so, so... Well, especially because, like, a lot of sites like an, uh, an IGN and uh, Game Informer and, like, GameStop and stuff, they all have forums attached to them, which... Uh, or just in general commenting places. Yeah, and just... Yeah. So, if you have, you know... Butt waxer fifty seven child giving, rapist one hundred and six giving you like an in depth review. You don't really have to go to a professional IGN uh, reviewer because you can just read like the general thread in forums about the games. You have stuff like all that stuff. Dude, EA here's... forums, uh, v, the four chains V board, all that stuff is it's a great way to get like legitimate actual like arguments for and against games as opposed to and there's stuff you can trust. Dude, no, here's exactly what's going to be said about this, and it's a perfect counterpoint, and that's why I'm saying it. It's, if I, uh, that is that uh, Jim Pelushi, the child rapist, he at least puts himself out there. He puts, he, puts his, he puts himself on a website. He puts his name there. Butt Munch Sandusky number 23 is just, is just anonymous on a website. What does that matter, though? He's an anonymous nobody. He's got, he's got, noth- he's got no credibility to worry about. He's not trying to project an image. He's not trying to gain respect within a published website. It's theoretically, the, the, the real, the real, air quotes, can you hear these air quotes? Uh, reviewers are working for, uh, they're working to gain fans who believe them to be reputable, non-biased sources that will come to them for things. Yeah, but it's unnecessary. But an anonymous, anonymous horde is, can't be trusted as much as uh, a, a, a reviewer whose name is out there that you don't know. I that what? No, that doesn't make any sense. If it's someone who if it's just some random guy A guy on, on, ran, on like no, no, IGN. Listen, listen, listen. If it's just some random guy on a gaming review website and he's like a paid reviewer, yes, right? Yes, that's if right. If just some random guy and he writes like, you know, a half like column article about a game and he gives like a number of review at the end, or I go to a two hundred post thread full of anonymous people that are actually giving, like, legitimate points. What, is, what are you going to trust more, then? Dude. You are absolutely not going to trust Jerry Buttmunch, game reviewer at IGN w- Monthly. You're going to trust the forum because they're giving more valid points. They're giving okay, more okay. points and <clears throat> counterpoints. Honestly, yes, in that case I would, because there's more people. There's, there's a ton of people. But if it was just one-on-one, anonymous nobody versus anonymous paid nobody for a website... You know, there's one, if, if Jim Paybody was saying, it's great, an anonymous do-gooder is saying, it's not great, I'd probably trust the guy whose name was out there. Yeah, I wouldn't, because he's getting, because this is what we talked about before, he's the guy getting paid. If he has, he has more at stake, so obviously he's going to say he's good, especially if he's getting paid by, you know, the publisher or the developer or something like that. Of course he's going to say the game is good or bad, because it's worth more to him. That's respect almost true. The respect almost doesn't matter for an online reviewer. Because nobody really cares about that stuff. It's not like the Huffington Post. No, dude, there's a little bit like that. There's a little bit of stuff like that because you have someone like a, maybe an Adam Sessler. I don't know if this is actually true, though. But he, he be, he's a guy on G4, and then eventually he starts his own things maybe uh, privately on the internet. He has a group of fans who trust him, and they come with him. Yeah, but that's different. That's because Adam Sessler, that's because Adam Sessler has a body of work. We talked about this kind of a little bit at the uh, like Gamer Girls and stuff. Adam Sessler has a body of work that supports his legitimacy as a game reviewer, because Adam Sessler is someone who is in tune with the industry. He knows about gaming. He likes gaming. He's done like you know. He's recovered. He's done a lot of news coverage about gaming. Whereas if it's like the first time you've ever heard of Jim Jibbity Job Jube, mm-hmm. uh, you know Jimmy paid, Sandusky, yeah, call him. paid reviewer. You know who? Why would you trust him if it's just a name on a page? Yeah, if Adam Sessler, if Felicia Day, even if like an Olivia Munn or a Morgan Webb or a Jessica Chobit started doing an own, their own independent thing, at least then they would have some credibility to them because there's a body of work, essentially a bibliography of sorts, that you can go back and see their past catalogs of work. 
Whereas if you just have a random nobody who's who's writing stuff, there's absolutely nothing at stake for them. So they're going to be able to take kickbacks like there's no tomorrow because there's almost no accountability for their actions. That is uh, 100% true. <laughs> And so I, that's why I feel like if it's a Joe Nobody on a on a paid reviewer, he's got as opposed to, lose, to yeah. a ton of form people, the form people don't have anything to lose either. But there's just more varying viewpoints there, which I think is is much better. Well, my point was that uh, you don't know, you really, really don't know what anonymous nobody on a website likes or dislikes. He could like crap all the time. He might th- he might have a terrible opinion. You know. Yeah, but if you think it's valid, then it's valid. Well, you know what I mean, though, because like if 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 uh, I really don't, I won't know. If Frankie Bundleston thinks that uh, My Little Pony Adventure is the world's best game, but he's an anonymous nobody who I don't know anything about, and Jumper Fundleston's getting paid fifty bucks to say it's not that great of a game, you know, I don't. Yeah, but what if what if the first guy he gives valid points about why it's like a legitimate game, and not and like even if it even if it's like. Sorry, I was going to go off. But it's not, about, it's not about valid points. It's about... Because, no, I, you, I yeah, you're totally right. If someone gave great reasons, yeah. But if someone was like, it's good or it's bad, and that's it, I would trust a guy who was, who was getting paid and had a name out there. Because if you're, you're comparing a, a guy who's being paid and is writing an argument that you wouldn't necessarily agree with and a guy who's not being paid and gives you an argument that you do agree with on why it wouldn't be good. But it, but We're if, assuming anonymous nobody who isn't getting paid is a poor writer is what we should do. Instead of a professional wrestler, uh, wrestler and writer. <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. He's not getting paid to review Fallout video New games. Vegas is the best He's getting game paid to wrestle in the octagon. Can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> he's getting paid to wrestle. That's what he's getting paid to do. <laughs> so he doesn't have to worry about what the video game guys want. Yeah, that's he's true. Micho Man Rindy Sivage. He's, he's Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> he's Indre the Jin. He's the Indre Tacker. He's Rim Mysterio Jr. <laughs> you know what I mean? Quadruple So, guys, the short of it, the short of what we're talking about is pay us to review your games. Because <laughs> yeah. we're going to pretend that we have integrity when we don't. Dude, I'm uh, You Okay, do you think we could ever have integrity? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, read all the D-Marks reviews and we, not with mine, because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get paid off immediately. Dude, because we, cause we, in our first episode, we took a brave stand against EA... And we did it. In that was our third episode. We did it also in the first episode because we talked all about Mass Effect. Actually, we totally did. Yeah. So why don't you? Why don't you I listen? Go re-listen to that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think we're no, gonna no, take no, a break. You, do, you know what I'm saying? We're not taking a break yet. Oh, I thought we were going to. Because uh, no, it, it's a real discussion. Do you think we would be able to get paid off? Oh, uh, I was like, could just cut us off, but I think it's a, I think it's a real thing we'd have to think about. I honestly don't think it's a real thing we're gonna have to think about. <laughs> But, um, I mean, I'd like, I think we all want to say that we wouldn't get to pay. It, it's, it all depends. That's, that's such an open-ended question. I don't think I can answer it, you know? Because yeah. I'd like, because, yeah, it just probably seems... nine times out of ten, no, I couldn't be paid off. But there's always that one out of ten chance that, sure, you know. Okay, might... not, not us. How about this? What, do you think it's easier for people in the gaming community to get paid off more than, like, a movie reviewer or something? I feel um, like I feel like people who are professional reviewers of video games they care less about the the people playing video games. I feel like they are think they have to they don't have high, as high of a standard because they probably think the community is younger. Yeah, because because if you have someone who uh, like says they like a movie or something like that, if it's a movie that everyone's going to go see, everyone's always going to be like, "That guy didn't know what he's talking about." Yeah, but if it, but video games, yeah, they don't have as many. Uh, uh, customers, I suppose, compared to a... They don't have as many astute customers. Yeah. Because people who buy games are varied and not necessarily always the customer. People who subscribe to a magazine are probably smart gamers, though. Maybe. I don't, you... think, I don't think anyone who subscribes to magazines is that smart. <laughs> anyone who subscribes to any magazine is that smart. But you, just, you know what I mean, though. It's just, it's just in general, the thing where uh, the gaming community is, is uh, you know, treated... Like, they're not as good as movie or, or music things. Yeah, but I, I think that's kind of... Or getting, books. I think that's kind of getting away from the point. Dude, it's not entirely. Eh, I, 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 people trust music or movie review things a lot. You, people trust Rotten Tomatoes like there's no nobody's business. Yeah, and Rotten Tomatoes is because it has a lot of anonymous people who have nothing at stake involved. That's false. Rotten Tomatoes is, a, is, a, is basically Metacritic. 
Yeah, but it also has a has a user guide that also is very popular. Really? Yeah. I thought Rotten Tomatoes was just uh, how many positive reviews on other sites compared to how many negative reviews on other sites. It does that, and then it also has user reviews. I feel like Metacritic does the exact same thing. Probably. Metacritic is a game thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we talked about it earlier. I was the one who brought it up. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I don't know, but the, you, I, how about this? I think the gaming uh, community uh, often differs far more than the uh, movie review community. Like, you can often see like a Dragon Age 2 get like a 9 from reviewers, and then community gives it 3. Because you never see like a movie that gets like a 9, because they only go up to 4 or they 5. They only go up to 4 or 5. <laughs> well, I think, I think a case like that is that... That's because, I think that's just because the nature of video games is so much different than the nature of movies. Because there are, as opposed to video games, there are core parts of movies that generally follow the same conventions for for them to be considered at least like competent and proficient movies. Mm. Whereas video games doesn't really have that set of guidelines because they're so varied by genre and so varied by like controls and peripherals and stuff like that. That's true. I think that's what makes it different there in that case. All right. I think I'm dragging it out. Yeah, I think you are too. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll see you later. See you guys later. And what do you think about that, guys? <laughs> um, we should make a bunch of songs. Dude, let's make up this... Well, Sons of Video has an official anthem. I don't remember what it is, but I sang it in one of the past episodes. But let's come up with some patriotic Sons of Video song titles right now. Sons, Sons, To the Front. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Sons Lead the Way. That's the same thing. Different. <laughs> You would. You're not head composer for the Suns. Fortunate Suns. Great. Uh, <laughs> Vidya in our hearts. That's good. Um, we are the stars, and Vidya is the Suns. <laughs> um, fiery Vidya soul. Nice. Yeah. I like. I like soul there. That was good. I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going by any conventions. Oh, yeah. You write the you write the ones that kids sing in school. I write the ones that soldiers feel in their heart. Oh, here we go. Here's a good one. Vidya the Beautiful. That's great. Yeah. Um, our Father's Vidyas. Mm, mm. Uh, we salute the sons of Vidya. Um, to those about to sons, we salute Vidya you. Right? Yeah. We, it spelled exactly really how that. it sounds. I really like that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ACDC will not be in charge of that song? No, of course not. And then, of course, the classic Song of Sons. Nailed it. That Nailed one sh- it. That one should have been the first one. Dude, <laughs> do you think... Okay. Dude, we should... That really should have been the first one. <laughs> really should have been the first one. Uh, what else does, What else do we need as a as a city-state? Uh, Are we a city-state? Maybe. Is that what happened? Did, Did we go from being just the world's most unbelievable entertainers to... A city state? No, uh, no. It's just like the way like Microsoft has their own anthem. Do they? Yeah, of course. How's, how's that go? Goes Microsoft. No, it goes, Microsoft. Oh Microsoft. Oh Microsoft. Do they sing that every day or every other day? It's every day. Okay. No, they come in. They they, uh, they go into the the Microsoft auditorium. <laughs> they look at the the picture of Bill Gates. He's, and, he's he couldn't be he couldn't be there. No, he looked at the picture of Bill Gates. And then they do uh, two minutes of hate time, where they show a picture of Steve Jobs and Apple <laughs> products, and you have to shout really loudly, and if you're not shouting hey, loud enough... Hey, just, hey, just. If you're not shouting loud enough, you get arrested by the Microsoft police. What happens then? Do you get fired, or do you go to the jail? No one knows. Paid jail. No one knows. It's a mystery. <laughs> you get paid to go... You go home. You come back the next day, you go back to jail, and you still get paid. Guys, did you read 1984? <coughs> 
Is that what happens? Yeah. Dude, nice. Anyway. We're making literary ra- fractions. Yeah. Guys. Actually, that's a really good thing because if you recall from the 19-whatever Super Bowl commercial, that Apple one where like they had it was against IBM. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Was, that was based off of Orwell's 1980s force. Dude. You remember that band I was in that was called Orwellian Dust Squad? We wrote uh, zero songs. Yeah. Guys, everyone knows that how bands work is you think of a cool name and then you say you're then a band. you're in the band. That's it. Then the band doesn't make any music. Still a band. Still a band. Guys, big week for video games. In that I played some. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, PC version of Dark Souls came out. Breaking, breaking news. Tom plays video games. Uh, PC version of Dark Souls came out. And guys, you may have heard, uh, the, the joke is... Within like six hours, it might have even twenty three minutes or something. Some guy immediately made a resolution patch for the game where he like fixed it and did all the stuff that because the did like he like made it way better than it was when it came out. Because right off the bat, Dark Souls was supposed to not be able to be in a resolution higher than twelve eighty by seven twenty. That seems weird. Yeah, they like just weren't doing it. It was like they they said it was like a straight to straight to PC port. No no fixes at all. But they also said, like, they couldn't do it or whatever. Yeah. Some guy immediately patched it, and there's already a ton of patches, and it's, like, way better, and it's great. Um, but, yeah. So I got that, and I got that patch, and I'm playing it. And it's awesome. And, guys, I want to talk about level design, but that's boring. So you know what we're going to talk about? The new Metal Gear! Yay! We're going to talk about level design if you want. We'll talk about it later, because I want to talk about Metal Gear. Dude, I want to talk about Metal Gear earlier, and you're like, I'm talking about Borderlands. You mean a jerk. Dude, Borderlands 2 is coming out, guys. It probably is not coming. It's going to come out. Uh, we're going to do at least one or two more podcasts for them. Well, yeah. I mean, actually, we'll, the, we'll be recording. One will come out the day it comes out. Think about it. That's true. We actually have two more, including that one. Yeah. Guys, that game's going to be sweet. I just pre-ordered it today. Uh, today is September the 4th, Third. if we're saying it's coming out. If if you guys want to believe we're talking directly into your ears live. Dude, I, I prefer to tell them the truth. But we're recording the, the day before. The heart of the matter. I, I I pre-ordered it today, guys, and there was no anywhere copies that had the sweet box anymore. The loot box, and it's depressing. Dude, I told you you should have checked Walmart. Dude, Walmart's known as a tyrant. Yeah, but it has stuff. Yeah, cheap stuff that I like. I they go there still, all the time. They still buy, They still sell things. <laughs> still sell things. The tyrant that sells stuff. That's what that's what that Walmart is. Yeah, dude. I mean, uh, you know, some people some people don't like. Dude, I know, I know, we talked about this a little bit, but maybe we didn't talk about it online. What do you think is going to be your first uh, go? Your first go, Borderlands ahead? go. I think we decided that it was going to be Salvadore. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. That probably would have been what I picked. If Why you, not Axton? If you hadn't picked Salvador, I probably would have gone him. Yeah, you think so? Because we probably would have done fun dual wieldings. Dude, dual wielding like I don't care about at all, but it might be cool. Dude, I can see it being cool, cool in that game. Because I, what I really hope is... Did you guys know there's going to be DLC characters? Yeah, there's at least one already in the works. I think you get it if you pre-order it. Does that suck or does that rule? Uh... Meh. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know either. Like, I guess... Because here's the deal. I don't see how it's any different than any other DLC. That, that how much is- would you pay for this? Just a character. Just a new character? It's not a, it's not a reskin. It's a totally new character. If it's a new character, I'd say like five bucks. I would say five bucks also. Yeah, that seems fair. But I'm sure they're going to be like twelve. I don't think they'll be that bad. I don't know how many they're planning. I don't think it's more than this one. Because hmm. because new characters in Borderlands changes the whole game. Yeah, it really does. That's the thing. Because because I was reading about it. Because like the you have Salvador, he's the gunzerker. He's got dual wielding. You have Axton, he's the like soldier analog. He's got the rockets. You have Maya, she's the siren, she does stuff. You have Zero, he's the ninja, he does stuff. And the new one is like called the Mechamancer. It uses like its uh, action skills like summoning like robots to attack people. Yeah. So that's yeah, it changes the game. But I don't know if they're planning on doing any more than just the fifth one that's there. <sighs> what else know? could they do? I don't know. I mean it, They always make it nice. Guys, I'm so pumped for that game. Here's here's what well, is there anything you want you think needed to be improved about the first game from the second? About what we call it Hoarderlands? Yeah, uh, maybe, yeah. Um <clears throat> that it didn't have that it should have had. 
or just in, or things that did have that were bad or just whatever, man. You just you got to go <coughs> go nuts, dude. There's a lot of things about co-op that could have happened that didn't happen, like about money. Like it'd be nice if you could trade money with each other. Yeah, that because even good. though it pooled, which is nice. Sometimes people had different amounts of money. It would have been nice if I could have gave you enough money to buy a gun. Yeah. That's, that all the time comes up. Like, yeah. seriously. I would like a... Here's here's probably my two biggest things. A, I would like... I would like a slightly more convenient way to in-battle heal. Because they have the healing items in the game. They're like, useless, yeah. Yeah, like the, the med packs. But A, they if take a... If you had a button for it, it'd be great. Yeah, but, but A, they take a uh, inventory space, which nobody wants to do because you have to have all the loot that you're going to sell. Yeah. And B, you're not going to be in the middle of a battle and go into your menu and use a health pack because A, it doesn't pause the game, so you're still being shot. And B, it's just, it just bre- it breaks flow, and that's a big problem. Yeah, if there was a button for it, that'd be great. Yeah. Two? It, yeah. Sorry, what were you going to do? No, I was trying to think of other ways they could implement that, but I don't have one. I think, yeah, I think like just like a button would would work. But all the buttons are used is a problem. Uh, you can figure something out. Go on. Uh, two more machine guns. Yeah, the machine whole, guns were actually some... uh, balance of weapons is a great point. Yeah, that's true because uh, first of all, the number of machine guns that were in the game were very very low. Honestly, had... the game should know which characters you are and not give you dumb weapons. Yeah, that's true. Don't be wrong. We, not all the time do you play as, as as use the weapons that the character uses. Yeah, but it should ha- it should be like by um by uh, weapon proficiency. Yeah, I don't or maybe that's maybe I don't that's know cheap. If they are keeping that. I think they are, but I don't know. But no, because like the thing of it is, is that there are tons of those burst fire combat rifles, which mostly sucked. And I never wanted to use them ever because they weren't strong enough. But machine yeah. guns were rad. They were really strong. They had a lot of ammo, and they were really strong and had a lot of ammo, and they were really cool and strong and strong, and they had a lot of ammo. Yeah, but you never got, you never saw those. They were extremely rare. Probably yeah, that was a huge issue. How good they were because you had SMGs, and then machine guns were just the better versions of <laughs> SMGs. And there was, but what if they added new requirements and like downsides of weapons? That'd be that'd be really cool. Because like there are, because here's the deal. Because just because you're saying how machine guns are just better SMGs, you know. Because the thing of it is, I wouldn't mind that because sniper rifles already kind of had stuff like that. If sniper rifles were ascended to be like the top tier of damage in the game, because you know they're sniper rifles and stuff. Yeah. But they but they had to deal with like all the swang and stuff like that. That'd be fine because that would be, seem like a worthy compromise. But the problem with the problem has always been the fact that revolvers were on par, if not stronger, than some uh, sniper rifles. Yeah. And they had absolutely no downsides, aside from looking too cool. Yeah, aside from being cool. Yeah, too cool. Because, yeah. like, shotguns had that, too, because if, sh- if you didn't land every shot, uh, you know, you weren't going to do as much damage. What about different ammo types for guns? You, you mean, know, like, 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 maybe you like had... Maybe, like, like, elemental rounds and stuff? Like, yeah. Like, Actually, may- no. I, they're, I think they are changing how elements work in that game. I, they might be introducing something similar to that, but I don't think they're going to be standard, like, elemental guns anymore. I think you might be able to change that. That'd be cool. No. Oh, what about uh, weapon customization? Yeah, we were, I was just about to say that. That'd be great. I don't think they're going to bring it in because I haven't read anything about it. But yeah, guys, that's one thing that Borderlands always needed. But but wouldn't it take away the fun of finding things? No, because if you find a good part on a good gun that you can finally, like, upgrade, like... Because it'd be cool to be able to have, like, the same gun, more or less, like, throughout the whole game. And it just kind of builds up from its own platform. Yeah, but... Because it would then be an Army of Two-style deal. And even if it's not really the same gun, it's still the same, like, you know, junk. But the, 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 but the main draw of Borderlands is finding guns. Yeah, and, it, and if... I know what you're saying is it gets better with time, but, you know... No, but my point is that I don't think it's taking too much away if the main draw switches from, uh... Finding guns to finding parts, you know? Yeah, but I think it kind of would. Maybe, maybe not. Because, it, cause it, it, you know, it, it, would, it would really take away from the, the main focus. It really would. It really would. Yeah, I, I, could, I can see your point there. Anyway, it's going to be great, guys. I'm excited for it. We're going to do a video of it, like, the second we can. Yeah. Stay tuned for that, because we will be rocking and rolling. Guys, if we didn't have a Let's Play channel, guess what we would be doing? Still playing it just as much. Yeah. it's not. We're, we're not doing it for you, friends. <laughs> you guys are just getting to join in. We're it's, here. It's, it's for me. We're we here. would be maybe talking less, probably getting mad at each other more, and that's probably it. 
Uh, Guys, but as you also see the trailer for Metal Gear Ground oh Zeroes. Oh, God, I forgot we didn't talk about this yet. <laughs> oh, guys. We're, I was going to post it on our Facebook, and I didn't. That's, that'd be good. Dude, uh, like, it's the best-looking game you've ever seen. Use the new Fox engine. Yeah. Guys, the idea is that the Fox engine is designed for... There's, it was designed by our Lord. It was designed by our Lord. God, Jesus. Hideo Christ. Um, Hideo Christ. Christo. Now, um... Uh, the new Fox Engine that they've, they were announcing. They announced it at PAX uh, just like two days ago from when this was made. They call it PAX Prime now, they do. PAX Prime. Because there's East, and so now you say Prime. People love saying Prime after Optimus. Wasn't it just pa- PAX West before? It used to be PAX. Oh. Now it's PAX Prime. Neat. Anyway. Um, yeah, so the Fox Engine is designed for current-gen systems, um, but it's also supposed to be uh, scaled up for when the next gen comes out. So ideally when Metal Gear Solid 5, which will probably be on next gen, comes out, they'll still be using the same Fox engine, but they'll be able to build on what they have now and still be able to upgrade graphics, AI, and all that stuff, uh, which will be pretty interesting to see, personally. Dude, I was going to go into a side topic, but let's go into this. Still the game. Guys, uh, it's going to be more of an open world game. It's going to be like... Cool oh, it's stuff. straight up supposed to be just an open world game. Like you can literally, you can uh, take helicopter to different missions. You can retreat from missions during. You, uh, you can use it. For, you can use it for a cover fire. That's awesome. Yeah. Also, uh, you can yeah. customize the song it plays. Here's to you. No, it's funny because there was a whole thread on V that was just like, "Guys, what's your chopper song gonna be?" And I laughed. You put any song? Yeah, he said you can put just about any song on it. Really? How do you do that? I have no idea, but that's what they said. I think they announced it's coming to PC also. Yeah. Well, no, because they play at the demo. They played it on a PC. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would your chopper song be? Don't say "Fortunate Son" because it's so obvious, dude. Yeah, that's what I, that's what a lot of people put. <clears throat> I don't. Um, mm. You're also not allowed to say "Flight of the Valkyries." That well, that was the uh, um, demo song on yeah. the helicopter. Um, uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me ponder that for a moment on my Cola brand Cola. I also drank some Cola brand Cola there. Um, what it does is it quenches your throat sores that we get from all this podcasting. Cola brand Cola. It's the coliest. Now, imagine if the slogan was literally, it quenches your throat sores. <laughs> you have throat sores, it quenches Dude, them. but they have that kind of stuff. They have, uh, they have, I saw a mouthwash for mouth sores. Oh, yeah. I was like, that's I thought you were going to say there, there was a... Uh, Cola for throat Yeah, Yeah, they do. Okay, um, Chopper song. What about Rooster? Rooster too, would... Too rooster, down? Rooster would be cool. No, because I like the idea because um, if your Chopper song is really, really loud... Ooh, that might be my Chopper song. Yeah? Uh, if your Chopper song is too loud, it makes the, your enemies easier to find the Chopper, and they can conceivably shoot it down. Right. Which I don't know what would happen, but I can only imagine it's the worst thing. <laughs> But here's going to be a really legit one. I don't know if it's my final answer, but Welcome to the Jungle. Welcome to the Jungle is a great That'd choice. That'd be a rad choice. <laughs> You'd be like, ooh, boo doo 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 And we'd be like, I'm some kind of crazy secret military organization. <laughs> can, you, can you turn the song off? Because naturally for a, <laughs> you know, for a covert ops you probably, thing, you probably can turn it off. The covert ops, you want to turn the song off. But if you're like, if you're like storming it, yeah, you know. What, yeah. would you, well, what are you thinking? Party in the USA. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Uh, what about what about Sorry for Party Rocking? Sorry for Party Rocking is a great choice. Actually. It's really funny. It's actually not a bad choice at all. Um, ooh, there's a lot of good choices. Uh, what about like the Battlefield theme? That'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool too, actually. What about Highway to the Danger Zone? That'd be good. Uh, what about... What about cheap sunglasses? By Highway ZZ Star. Top? Highway Star is a weird choice, but it's good. <laughs> cheap sunglasses by ZZ Top because you just woke up. Yeah. Um, you feeling like something something molasses? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, how about? See, guys, we're we're name dropping songs here. Show you how cool we are. Yeah, we are. What about um? Dude, what about uh, Storm Coming from uh, Norris Bar? I was also thinking of that for some reason. It's a really good choice. What about uh, Go Go Gadget Gospel from them too? Dude, what about Stormbreak Loose from a popular unknown band, <laughs> The Damascus Sun? Damascus Sun, yeah. They don't get any airplay, I'll tell you that. 
Dude, that'd be a good choice, though. That'd actually be a pretty cool choice. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. That was our band we were in. Yeah. It's not a terrible choice. Um, If we had a, a 38-minute long helicopter ride, we could do that. Yeah. What about... Do you want anything classical? Because I know this is a dumb question, but we're talking about this now. Um... Because I was almost thinking maybe you could figure some Zoe Keating thing out. Maybe. She's not classical, but you know what I mean. You know what would be kind of cool is, um... Because we've had, like, a, a Legion's Aftermath. Maybe. You know what I was kind of thinking oh, would be, so. uh... Beethoven's Ninth, like, Ode to Joy. Do, 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 do. Sorry. I mean... Which one was do, that? Do, 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 do. That's what That's I meant. That's Beethoven's Fifth. What? What's Ninth? Ninth is Ode to Joy. Like, the movement. Do, do, do. Like, if you have, like, a big, booming choral version of Ode to Joy, that'd be really cool. That's it, right? Yeah. yeah. Guys, be pro like, tip, Beethoven, it's short, loud stuff. Bam, bam, bam. That's all I gotta that's know. That's not true all the time. It's almost always true. Dude, listen to... Seven, give me a taste of fifth. Give, give me seven... Give, listen to Seventh Symphony How's Second that Movement. It's really slow. Zoe Keating did a really... She did a cover of it at the show that we went to. That's true. It was really <clears> slow and really good. Guys, music is a big part of our lives and also of our helicopter rides. Yeah. Because you need kind of like a stormy, storm thing, like a storming in song. Yeah. <coughs> what about Breaking City? No, that wouldn't make any sense. Sorry. That would be really funny. I don't know what you're talking about. What about, about Cars, In Cars, by that band that I don't like? Is that might be by the police? I don't even know what song you're talking do, about. Do, 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 no, I, I, I don't know. Here in my car, oh. we can do all this stuff. Yeah, we got mirrors right and is. junk, and we're driving on a road in a helicopter. <laughs> song they wrote. Dude, I would just want to create, like, if... Because if you can put, like, individual MP3s, what I would do is just... I would just have a the... A baby laughing in slow motion? No, but that's <laughs> good, too. <laughs> no, I would just have the, uh, yeah from Won't Get Fooled Again by The Who. Yeah. So the helicopter is like, yeah! And that'd be it. That's a really good call, too. Dude, there's nothing but comedy potential there. <laughs> really is. Dude, that's, that'd be great. <clears throat> I don't know. That's Now that's going to be a huge thought. Yeah. You can only have one song. You can do I like a so. playlist, helicopter playlist. Could you... Is could... there any helicopter song? What? Like a song that's just about helicopters. Maybe. Everyone's going to say Fortunate Son. There's no question about that. Could you... And this is not going to be a popular choice. Could you choose Snake Eater? Could that be a choice for the helicopter song? <laughs> Is it raining? I mean, probably. <clears throat> Maybe. Well, I'll think about this one, guys. But right now, I think we're going to do plugs. Are we all, we're already at plugs? Didn't we have something else to talk about? Dude, we're already 20 minutes in on this segment. <laughs> I also want to talk about one other thing, just real quick. Okay. Um, about Metal Gear Solid. Blah. Is that uh, the whole story, the overarching story... Oh, right. We didn't talk anything about that. We talked about helicopters the whole time. <laughs> I just want to say real quick, the... The people are like, well, there's nothing else to talk about. There's a lot of stuff they could still do in the Metal Gear Solid no, thing. No, because Kojima came out he like a few years ago and he said that uh, Solid Snake is done. He's not going to have Solid Snake be the star of any more games, pretty much. But he said there's still tons of stuff to do with Big I think Buff. They should, I think they should do Solid Snake. Because Big there's, Buff... There's a whole bunch of missions that Solid Snake did. Yeah. But like Big Boss is like <clears throat> one of the mo- he's like the second most important person in the entire franchise. Dude, there's so much... Because like, the overarching story of Metal Gear Solid exists. But there's yeah. all this stuff that the characters could have done that could still be games. Like, Salt Snake went on a million missions. They could just be normal games. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They don't have to be part of that giant overarching conspiracy story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because <clears throat> you could just do, like... Solid Snake. A fight some terrorists. Boom. Boom. That's it. You know? That's it. Terrorists. Now you just have that, and it's no problem. Terrorists. Or you could just start a new franchise with, like, Jimmy Snaker or something. <laughs> Snake. Or you could have Solid Snake doing normal stuff. You're like Solid Snake go-karts with his family. Right? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, why not? Dude, wacky, wacky, Metal Gear wacky racers. Remember Solid Snake skateboarding? Yeah, dude. That you, never, you said you never played that game. I, I played it one time. I was like, this blows. I, I, I had some fun. All right, now we're going to do plugs. I just wanted to mention that th- it wouldn't be a big deal if you had a different thing. Sure, I'll just say. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> YouTube, blog, and Gmail. What What are the Gmails? Uh, sonsvideo at gmail.com. Oh, I thought it stood for gamer mail. What? The Gmail stood for gamer mail. Oh, no. <clears throat> you said Gmails. So I don't know what it meant. Oh, um, right. Yeah, email us, guys. Rate us on iTunes. Go look at our videos on YouTube. 
Just talk to us. Call us on the phone if you know our numbers. Yeah, whatever, man. Don't Give us a text me- a sext message. Be like, baby, 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 period, send. Yeah. Don't say exclamation point. Seems then, pretty reasonable, baby, hussy. baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Remember the episode of Rocker's Modern Life where he's a, a, a sex phoner? Phone sex person? I don't remember that. It's funny because uh, Bev Bighead calls him and he goes, oh, baby, oh, baby, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, baby. And she goes, Rocco? I remember that part for some reason, but I don't remember any other part of that Yeah, he was, a, he was a sex guy. All right, <clears throat> guys, you know what to do. If you listen to the podcast, you know it. If you don't listen to the podcast, usually, go listen to the whole thing. You listen to all of them. They're all great. I can't think of a bad one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Guys? Guys. 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 It's time for speed review. <laughs> Man, way to keep me hanging on that one. What's well, up? Right. It's time for one, two, three. Speed reviews. Doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> Let's do it together. Come on. All right. We're sons. Sons chant. We're sons. Three. Two, Two, one, speed, speed reviews. reviews. Tom, this is the top ten RPGs that don't take themselves seriously. Man, we are scraping the barrel for these lists. They're all on Game of Accused. Look them up, guys. Thousands Arms. Uh, Thousands Arms is a game where you play as a new type of being who has 1,000 arms. Let me tell you where the arms come out of. It's going to take only a few hours. <laughs> he got... Uh, Let's man, just, just fast re- forward to this part. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 out of 10. Mother 3 for the GBA. Uh, well, the thing about this game is you got to tell your children not to walk my way. you got to tell your children not to hear my words. It's a 9 out of 10. Uh, Super Mario RPG 11 to 7 stars. This is a game we play as Super Mario. He's a man on a mission. He likes princesses and stuff. He's going to find the princess of his dreams, and then he's going to find a cloud man. So you get a 1 out of 10. Shadow Madness. Uh, Shadow of the Madness is a game where you play as a young boy who has to hunt down the shadows in order to save his shadow friend from the shadows. It gets a shadow out of 10. Obuna. Obuna is Italian for pasta. What they do is it's a pasta making simulator where you make pasta. Um, I didn't see much use of it, but I think it's for ladies who want to know how to make pasta. So you get a 5 out of 10. Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. Uh, in this game, you actually got just a bunch of uh, paper cutouts, like paper dolls, and Mario, and all his cartoon pals. And you and your little sister played Tea Party with Mario, and you had to go through a thousand years. And it felt like a thousand years, because tea parties aren't very fun. Gets a thousand years out of ten. Half Minute Hero for PSP. Half Minute Hero is my nickname in high school. Ten out of ten. Okage, Shadow King. Uh, in this game, you are Okage, the Shadow King. Sounds pretty fun. 9 out of 10. Mario and Luigi Superstar Staga. In this game, your Mario and Luigi Superstar uh, is made by Andrew Lloyd Webber. You're just doing all the musicals, man, and it's a play, but you're also Mario and Luigi. So it's like you're playing a game in a play. And there's songs. Neat. 7 out of 10. Earth Boond. Uh, in this game, you're playing as a giant paleolithic asteroid, and it's your job to, to get to Earth so you can kill all the dinosaurs before they invade the moon. Gets a 7 out of 10. We did it, it, guys! We'll see you again next week. Same sun time, same sun channel.